Stan Jabalisco here. I'm going to show you um, a pictorial diagram and a brief descript give you a brief description of how a carbon arc lamp works. This is one of the oldest form uh, of lamps that you'll ever see and you probably won't see it very often anymore except maybe in a high school or college physics laboratory. What it comprises is a pair of carbon rods, as you can see, brought close to each other and supplied with a high voltage. It can be either AC or DC voltage. Uh, in this case, we have a collimating lens. That simply means that it makes the bright arc, the, the beam from the point source of light, parallel. You can also have a reflector, a concave reflecting mirror, which is equally common. Uh, it, it depends, I guess. Equally common, meaning you'll never see either one of them, right? At least not these days. But they were once and remain an excellent way to get a brilliant source of light at a relatively low cost, because carbon is not particularly expensive. Uh, you sharpen the rods to a point and you touch them together briefly to create a spark. Once you, that spark has occurred, you slowly pull the rods apart, millimeter by millimeter. And an arc should take place and it won't be pink as I show here. This is only for illustration. Um, it will be a brilliant white and it will also contain a considerable amount of ultraviolet radiation so you don't want to look directly at it. Uh, you, in fact they used to use it and sometimes uh, maybe an older medical facility you'll still see one used for as a sun lamp to produce a sunburn which uh, nowadays isn't recommended except for certain therapeutic purposes. Uh, certain skin diseases may re uh, require exposure to ultraviolet. But in any case, you wouldn't want the collimating lens because the glass will block the ultraviolet. And that is one way that uh, movie actors, uh, when stages were illuminated by arc lamps, used to protect their eyes. They'd put a if not a collimating lens, they'd put a flat sheet of glass in front of the arc, uh, and then the arc would illuminate the entire stage or scene uh, for the actors to perform on or in. Uh, it worked for uh, on stage plays, and it was also used in the movies. Uh, nowadays, they've got, I guess, more sophisticated and more expensive ways to obtain bright white light. But a carbon arc lamp will do it uh, gradually though, or maybe not so gradually, these carbon rods will wear away and you have to keep the spacing maintained as they uh, more or less evaporate or burn up. But if you can still make one of these if you have, uh, if you can get some carbon rods uh, at a scientific supply uh, outlet and um, use a relatively high voltage, several hundred volts recommended. Uh, be careful because you can get electrocuted from the voltage and you can also be have your eyes damaged if you look at the carbon arc directly. Uh, but that is a carbon arc lamp. It, it used to be employed in street lights way back in the 1800s, some of the very first street lamps uh, were carbon arc lamps. Uh, and uh, now, although they are a relic, uh, they represent an important uh, form of lamp from a historical interest standpoint and also just from a general physics interest standpoint. And they also uh, might interest you if you're a student of physics or electricity or electronics. Stan Jubilisco signing off. Until next time, so long.